This simple action, turning on a water faucet, is so taken for granted that very little attention is paid to it. After all, we've always had water, haven't we? Today, some 13 million people turn on water faucets in Southern California. Water that allows the Southland economy to flourish. Water that makes life possible. A little understood fact about the water that we use here in Southern California is that most of it comes to us from many hundreds of miles away. This is the story of the building of one of the remarkable delivery systems that brings water to the Southland. Metropolitan Water District's Colorado River Aqueduct. This amazing project helped Southern California develop into a dynamic world community. The influence that a water supply has had in Southern California is quite obvious. Southern California has become the first truly world community with a gross national product that would rank in the top dozen nations of the world. Quite an achievement for people living in a semi-arid community on the edge of a desert. But back around the turn of the century, Southern California was being discovered. By 1913, the city of Los Angeles had been able to secure its own source of water from the Eastern Sierra. But outlying communities surrounding the city of LA were expanding, and they too needed water. By the 1920s, it was certain that a larger, more reliable water source had to be acquired. The communities of the coastal plains surrounding the city of Los Angeles were stymied. Individually, they could not support a new water delivery system, but collectively? A cooperative venture was the answer, and the dream began to unfold. Initially, 13 communities formed the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California and embarked on a water project of monumental proportions. They would bring the waters of the Colorado River 300 miles to the east to Southern California. The land separating the Colorado River from Southern California, even today, is harsh and uncompromising. Five mountain ranges stand between the life-giving water and the people who need it. Weaving the aqueduct over, under, and through the mountains appeared to be an almost unsurmountable task, but it had to be done. Vast expanses of desert simmering under a boiling sun had to be crossed. This is a desolate region, with summer temperatures climbing to 120 degrees in the shade and no shade. This is a land for rattlers and cactus, not for people. But into this open fire pit they came, by the thousands. By 1931, 
the surveying and plotting of more than 50 possible routes for the man-made river had been completed. Of these, the Parker route was chosen as the safest and most economical. At the depths of a depression, the voters of Southern California gave overwhelming approval to a $220 million bond issue to finance the construction of the Colorado River Aqueduct. One of the largest peacetime construction jobs in history got underway. 38,000 men stretched out over a 250-mile work front. They built a dam north of the town of Parker, Arizona to create Lake Havasu, where Colorado River water would first be drawn into the aqueduct system. Hydroelectricity generated here would help lift the water and shove it through mountains to Southern California. They built pumping stations along the route. Each lift would send the water on again by gravity until it reached the next plant to be lifted again and then again and again. They dug a ditch and lined it with concrete and snaked it across the blazing sands. Anticipating growth to the system, the canals were designed and built oversized while the pumping systems were designed so that each of them could be modified to handle larger quantities of water as they would be needed in the future. Meanwhile, about 125 miles upstream, the wild Colorado River was in the process of being controlled by the construction of Hoover Dam. The newly formed Metropolitan Water District guaranteed to purchase one-third of all the hydroelectricity generated by the dam, energy that would also help lift the water from the river to the coastal plain. Inside Mount San Jacinto, the Colorado River aqueduct builders dug through solid rock, inch by laborious inch. In all, nearly 100 miles of tunnels were blasted out of the rock. Drill and load, shoot and muck, they were driving a river through the mountain. They worked around the clock for nearly 10 years to move a river to the growing population of Southern California. These were men of iron with muscles of steel, dedicated men and women building a dream. Mechanics, laborers, compression men, doctors, nurses, blacksmiths, cooks, hard rock miners, truck skinners, these were heroic people, bringing life to the Southland. With the completion of the Lake Matthews Terminal Storage Reservoir and distribution lines that spread out to member cities, the aqueduct project was completed. The year, 1941. Colorado River water that serves Southern California has its origins high in the Rocky Mountains of Wyoming and Colorado. As the water gathers volume on its rush to the sea, it drains nearly a quarter of a million square miles of Western America. Dams up and down the 1400 mile river control the wild rush of water today. In addition to generating clean hydroelectricity, they store about 60 million acre-feet of water for use throughout the West. Parker Dam, one of the deepest in the world, forms Lake Havasu, which serves the recreational needs of hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. It is here at Witsit Intake that the water's incredible journey begins. The water is pushed up the mountainside, up through 10-foot diameter steel pipes, several million tons of water a day to start a 48-hour journey to Southern California. 
Passing through the first of more than a hundred miles of tunnels, the water enters Gene Reservoir, first of the man-made lakes on Metropolitan System. Dominating the small valley is the Gene Pumping Plant, which lifts the water again into another tunnel to emerge into the beautiful Copper Basin, the spot many feel to be the most breathtaking on the entire system. From Copper Basin, the water starts its long roller coaster ride down, under, and through tunnels, open aqueduct, and underground siphons, which allow for the passage of infrequent stormwater runoff. In some sections of the desert, where the terrain drops dramatically in grade level, the water flows through conduit large enough to drive a truck through. Through open canals for the next 50 miles, the water flows silently, unseen and unheard, except for metropolitan patrolmen who regularly check the entire system, including the transmission lines that carry power to the pump stations. At Iron Mountain, the third pump station on the route, the water is again forced up and through the mountain. Each lift allows the water to flow by gravity until it reaches the next lift many miles away. Aqueduct engineering is precise. As the water flows by gravity, it drops less than one foot a mile. At Eagle Mountain, the water is lifted again, more than 40 stories to continue out across the desert. As the water passes through the final lift, the Heinz pumping plant, it has been raised more than a third of a mile. From Heinz, it's all downhill to the people of Southern California, from Ventura County to the distant Mexican border. Near Palm Springs, the water passes unnoticed beneath the interstate highway and through the Mount San Jacinto Tunnel site of the toughest construction effort on the project. Once through the tunnel, the first major distribution line takes off to serve Riverside and San Diego counties. The main line continues through a series of conduits, siphons, and tunnels until the water empties into the terminal reservoir, Lake Matthews. More than 180,000 acre feet of water can be stored here to be released as needed through 700 miles of distribution pipelines to member cities of the Metropolitan Water District. Today, Metropolitan provides water to a 5,200 square mile service area. Metropolitan not only manages Colorado River water, but also distributes state water project water from Northern California. Metropolitan personnel are in constant communication, monitoring and keeping the entire system in balance with the demand for water by member agencies throughout the Southland. Prior to delivery, the water, in most cases, stops at filtration plants, where it is treated to assure good quality. Chemists continually monitor the water, so that when you turn on your faucets at home or at work, you can depend on an uninterrupted, clean, pure supply. For half a century, this great engineering feat we call the Colorado River Aqueduct has served Southern California well. When it was completed, an inexhaustible supply of water seemed to be there. But other Colorado River Basin states, which have not used their full allotment to the Colorado in the past, are growing. With that growth, their use of water grows too. 
And Mexico is entitled to Colorado River water as well. The Bureau of Reclamation has estimated that within a few years, all available Colorado River water will be in use. All California continues to grow too. By the year 2000, forecasters predict that California, the most populous state in the union, will be home to more than 30 million people. The ongoing need for water by this growing population will place an almost unprecedented strain on most water delivery systems in the state. As we approach the 21st century, recognizing that water is a limited resource, each of us must make a commitment to managing water so none of it is wasted. The Colorado River Aqueduct was built with more than concrete and steel. It was built with foresight, courage, and determination. It will continue to take courage and determination to serve future generations with their most vital resource, water.